Yes. Welcome you uh, to the 40th Vikram Sarabhai Memorial Lecture. We had the last lecture in November, and uh, this year, 2019, this is the first memorial lecture uh, in the series. This is the 40th one, and from 1973, uh, we are conducting uh, this Vikram Sarabhai Memorial Lectures every year, or maybe twice in a year. We know uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai is the uh, founder of Ahmedabad Management Association. He is a very, very well-known, renowned person in the field of, uh, I would say, innovation, technology, in all aspects in science. So if you see uh, the institutions which we have, he has started, like Indian Institute of Management, National Institute of Design, Physical Research Laboratory, uh, Ahmedabad Textile Research Association, ATIRA, and Space Application Center, SEC, uh, this ISRO. And uh, if you see all these organizations are of repute today in our country, not only in our country, but they are uh, flourishing and uh, doing wonderful things for international uh, reasons. So we must give a tribute to him. And uh, therefore, uh, at AMA, we have been uh, doing this uh, series of lectures and we are calling very, very eminent people from all across uh, the world and also from various fields who are technocrats and uh, they are experts in their subject, innovators and uh, trendsetters. I'm very pleased to mention that during uh, the, this is the centenary year of uh, birth year of uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai and uh, during uh, the vibrant uh, summit this year, few days back, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi was here and uh, he inaugurated one very uh, apt uh, statue of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai at the riverfront of Ahmedabad. And that was a very special uh, small gathering uh, and function where uh, the Sarabhai family was there, Vik uh, Kartike Bhai and his family. And, uh, Few of uh, the heads of these institutions, which were started by Vikram Sarabhai, uh, they were there and in their presence, uh, uh, Mr. Modi inaugurated and uh, that was very good honor for him and we are very pleased. Today, uh, in the 40th lecture, we have a very, very eminent person, uh, Dr. Anand Srivastava. He is uh, chairman and co-founder of Global Institute of Stem Cell Therapy and Research California. A world-renowned authority in the field of stem cell, uh, biology, cancer research, and uh, gene therapy on the important subject, he is going to talk about innovation in regenerative medicines. He is doing his research in stem cell-based therapy to aid those suffering from degenerative or genetic diseases, genetic diseases around the world, such as Parkinsonism, Alzheimer's, autism, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, spinal cord injuries, paralysis, blood-related disease, cancer, and burns, and such thing. I know, uh, we know that these are becoming a very, very uh, dangerous aspects in today's world with the lifestyle changes. He has set up a company and under his leadership, they are developing most advanced stem cell based technology supported by leading scientists with the pioneering publication uh, in the area of stem cell biology. Dr. Anand Srivata's research work has been presented in various national and international scientific meetings and conferences in India, Japan, Germany, USA and many more countries. His expertise and scientific achievements were recognized by many scientific fellowships and by two consecutive awards to highly prestigious uh, internationally recognized JITCEC award from Science and Technology Agency, Government of Japan. He has been bestowed upon USA congressional recogn uh, recognition for his contribution in the field of stem cell. 
it's a complex subject, but during today evening, he made it very, very interesting and very, very informative for a layman like me, because I am not from the field of uh, science and medical. But I was very happy to learn from him, and I would like to request him that he uses that uh, theory, what he taught me for a minute and say that how the body works and the cell works. I'm not sharing about it. But I think he is able to make the very complex subject uh, to a very interesting and very easy uh, in a uh, uh, way he is able to uh, explain. So I'll not take more time. Uh, I will, uh, uh, of course, uh, welcome him with a bouquet of flower on behalf of AMM and all of us sitting here. So uh, I'll give a big round of applause. At the same time, I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, Mr. Devin Patel, who is here with us. He is president and co-founder of Global Institute of Stem Cell Therapy and Research, who is also contributing extensively for the stem cell research. Uh, since he is here, and he has uh, made the efforts to make this program possible, so we must uh, recognize that and we are grateful to him. And I request uh, uh, Dr. Kartike Sarabhai to welcome him with a bouquet of flower. Please come on the stage, please. You can come here. Thank you, Devin Bhai. And now, uh, uh, Dr. Anand Srivastava. Thank you very much for wonderful words about me, and uh, though I don't deserve, in fact. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, so, uh, President Rajiv Mehta ji and uh, Dr. Paresh Karya. Today, um, Kartike Sarabhai is also here. And this is an absolute honor for me to stand here in front of you guys. I, uh, it's, it's really honor. And then when you speak in front of the people with whom uh, you grown up from the beginning, and uh, when I was a kid, I, I, I never thought that I'll be standing here today. So it, that gives enormous joy. You get all the honors, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. But when you get some recognition by your own people, that's real gold, diamond, you can say. So uh, I was thinking about this, and I was talking uh, with uh, Rajiv ji, that uh, about uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Of course, I know him very well. Not I know, means the entire world knows about him. So, uh, and uh, he has been an extraordinary person. And uh, I was knowing him uh, because of his contribution in uh, space science. I was talking before coming here uh, with uh, Rajiv ji and all these people, and then I came to learn that not only space science, but he, he was champion of business, textiles and everything, and he has excellence in every single thing. I, I was simply surprised and amazed to know that, that how a single person can do so many things. It is just impossible. Uh, I cannot imagine, basically. So, so, seeing that, I was just thinking, about his name, Dr. Vikram, and then Sara, and then Bhai, okay? Then uh, I am from India, I born in Banaras. So then I thought, who can be Vikram? Vikram means uh, enormous amount of power and other things. And who can be Vikram except Hanumanji? But of course Hanumanji is Vikram Bajrangi. But no other than, after Hanmanji, I think only Dr. Vikram Sarabhai stands up. <laughs> so his name is really Vikram, 
and then his Sara means you know everywhere, and then Bhai for everybody. So Vikram Sara Bhai, of course, uh, the perfect name given, given by I, I I think it was given by the God to him, and uh, the achievements and other things he did for the country, and not only for the country for the world. Uh, yes, if I start talking about that, then the entire lecture will go on that. But I'm coming on the uh, what I what we do actually. So uh, I would like to tell a little bit about my journey. And uh, of course, I born in Banaras. My father was a very leading cardiologist, and I studied at BHU and Banaras Hindu University. And then I, wa I was always thinking how to really uh, manage and cure this un incurable diseases, uh, which has almost 70% of entire diseases of human beings. And what is the exact level of the medical science today? And you will be surprised to know that where we stand in fact in, in, the, in the field of medical science today. How many, how many diseases we really can cure. So I'm going to tell you and you will be surprised that we can cure only those diseases which is coming to our body because of some foreign infection like bacteria or some microorganism. So we have extraordinary antibiotics. We really treat, when we treat the person, the person is 100% okay. Same with microorganisms like malaria and all filaria, all these things. So you can treat even the viruses which is coming from outside to the body, we cannot treat it. We do not have treatment for Ebola, HIV, AIDS, there are a lot of viruses. Apart from this, name other diseases, all the metabolic diseases like Alzheimer, Parkinson's, hair is falling, aging is going on, liver function down, lung is going, hypertension, cholesterol, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, cancer, all these metabolic diseases, which is not because of any foreign infection. Our body gets malfunction because of some reason. There is no treatment at all. Just management. We do not have any medicine for anything. So, and so you can see that how many diseases is coming because of outside infection, bacteria, virus, maybe 20%, 80% diseases, we do not have any answer, nothing. So how we, we can really treat this disease? What are, what are the possibilities? How, how just manage, manage means through chemical or through lifestyle. Those are the management, okay? So, then I came to know that these diseases uh, caused by some genes are involved in this and that. So the human genome program was uh, done in 90s to clone the human genes and the scientists thought that if you know the correct gene sequence, so you can change the defective gene with the correct gene and you can cure the disease. That's what the human genome program went. We, cl we sequenced entire human genes but when we went over to hum human gene therapy, it's so complex to change the gene. And it's very difficult to train the doctors because it needs a lot of time from the doctors and clinicians. And then you need huge infrastructure. And even if you go out to treat any people, it's, it's not easy. It's very complex. And I was, I was also doing the gene therapy in, in 1999, 97, 98, like that. So I was thinking, what is the other way? less complex way to treat this uh, metabolic diseases or, or the, where the organ is losing the function. So the idea came in my mind that there is a master cell in the body called a stem cell. The stem cell is the master cell of the body. From this stem cell, entire body comes out. So then I thought, is it possible to take out this stem cell in the lab, to culture this stem cell in the lab? And if possible to culture, then can you differentiate these stem cells into the different kind of cells? So, or you can differentiate these cells into different kind of organs or tissue. So all these things, I'm going to talk how these journey start, what is the stem cell and where we stand at this time point. So like the name of uh, our institution is Global Institute of Stem Cell Therapy and Research 
in short form it is geo star and uh, the entire vision to cure the human diseases with the regenerative medicine and we say regenerative medicine because these stem cells may regenerate all the organs so what, whenever the organ is under damage or degeneration you may use regenerative medicine and stem cell is one of them so uh, of course you know about me so i'm going to next slide so we we have very uh, a smart idea that it's very important to do research first without research you cannot do anything so we have a research division and therapy division so we do locally all the research and everything to to address the local diseases so we can do that and then we go for the therapy so now i am just coming on the basic of the stem cell science what is the real stem cell science what is that so um, if you see there uh, after uh, the fertilization and all these things there is a specific uh, a stage comes called blastocyst stage and this is the cells you can you can clone entire you can using one cell you can clone the human basically and so we take the stem cell from here these stem cells can make any organs and then any any kind of cells or tissue can be made using this stem cell so the idea is to take the uh, cells culture it okay good i was Okay, good. Thank you. So, differentiate whatever you want: muscle, heart, kidney, lung, brain, and then transplant to the patient. So, it's very, very simple idea. So, you see, there's this has endless possibilities. So, I'm coming again, uh, eighteen year back when I was not knowing, and even world was not knowing how you can. is it possible to take out the stem cell in the lab and culture in the lab so uh, you see these are the human embryonic stem cell inside the culture to cul to make in the culture you need this support and f food for the cells so these are the animal uh, support or animal f uh, cells which feed on these stem cells so this stem cell can grow but because these are these cells are contaminated means mixed with the animal cells so this can be good for the lab purpose or experimental purpose but it can never go to the uh, humans because it's contaminated with the animal product so then i develop this clean culture medium or clean clean culture food you can say for the stem cells which does not have any kind of animal uh, cells or other things so this may go to humans from this to this it took me 4 years so you if you see these two photographs that takes 4 year to come up to this now this was possible to use this cells for the uh, human beings so uh, now in 2003 and 4 nobody was knowing in fact if you inject this stem cell whether it survive multiply does anything do, do not do anything how to know so i was developing in utero transplant program when in utero transplant mean means that when the baby is developing inside mother womb then can you do some kind of therapy to the developing baby so the diseased baby can born uh, healthy like genetic uh, diseases and all these things so i was developing the in utero transplant program using the same thing i injected the stem cell in the developing baby and if you see this dark color here so i asked three question if i inject this stem cell whether it is going to integrate with the developing organs or not going to survive or not so if you see all the dark it tells me after injection of the stem cell that stem cell goes survive multiply and also integrate with all those organs which are under development so that first time to the word i showed yes stem cell may help in development of the organs and that is again 2003 or 4 like 14 year back so i was very much interested in uh, uh, blood related disease like thalassemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell is a big problem in 
uh, tribal belt of Gujarat and uh, other places of India with this, that is a genetic disease related with the blood. And there is a gene defect. If that gene defect is there, the blood uh, is not good and person needs continuous transfusion of blood or may die. So I was, I was interested in making the blood cells using the stem cells. So I'm not going to much detail science. So uh, I tried to make blood using stem cell. These are the different uh, stages of the making the blood cell. And finally, I could make the red blood cell for the transfusion. And uh, the main problem of the blood today is three. We do not have enough blood supply right now. So if, if we want to transfuse blood from one person to another person, we do not have enough supply, then we need matching. And also we need clean blood. There is always chance of the transfer of the disease from one person to another person. So how to solve this problem? That's what the idea behind going in my mind. So I created this red blood cell. These are the just before the maturation of the red blood cell. Red blood cell uh, before the maturation has big nucleus. In our blood, we do not have nucleus. That is the only cell we do not have nucleus. All means we do not have brain. All other cells has the brain. So, or, or the nucleus, you can say. <laughs> so, so, it has the big nucleus, but the biggest challenge, how to remove this nucleus and make the uh, cell survive. Like removing brain from one person and that person should survive. So, I developed this technique and then finally you see the red blood cell like donut shape. It does not have nucleus. And this is published in topmost journals like stem cells in 2007, 6 and 4. Uh, uh, and that is of course uh, uh, available on the uh, uh, National Institute of Health webpage. Uh, so first time I made this blood, now we are trying to make this blood in the bioreactor. And this is universal donor red blood cell which can be transfused to any, any person. And uh, so after that, I wanted to, uh, and we were studying in the medical school that, okay, if the brain is damaged, it cannot be repaired. So that was the biggest problem. So I thought, okay, is it possible to uh, repair the damaged brain using a stem cell? Then again, I, I created a simple model. I damaged one portion of brain that you can see here, and then I say, okay, if you inject the stem cell in the brain, is it going to survive, multiply, and try to repair the damaged portion of the brain or not? So this is the animated, but I'm now going to show you the real science, which I did. So when I injected like that, after 24 hour, uh, because I put so here is the, again, big science I have to do before going to do this, because I'm injecting some cells. So how to track those cells? Because brain cells is there, I'm injecting other cells, so how I know that my cells which I injected is really going to work? Okay, that is the big challenge. So I did gene therapy to this, this cells and gave the green fluorescent gene. So when I inject, I know that this green fluorescence coming, so this is the cell which I injected. So, so I made a uh, biotech kind of cell, and then after 24 hours, in fact, I really did not see any green color in the brain, okay? And, but I, little, little faint green color, I don't know if you can see because there's light, so uh, if you can off this light somehow, it may be a little more clear, but it's okay. But after, but I just wanted to really know if this little even faint green, uh, is real or not real. So I use another chemical. If this green is real, it will turn like brown. But, so it turned brown, but so it tells me that after 24 hours, the stem cells are there, which I injected, but it is not enough to really tell that it is going to repair the brain, okay? So I, I waited for one week. After one week, you see all green, and this is damaged portion of the brain. The cells started multiplying, and this green and started traveling towards the damaged portion of the brain. This is the, uh, another uh, strong microscope in all this equipment to see this blue color is the stem cell traveling towards the damaged portion of the brain. So that tells, yes, it survives, it's multiplied, it's traveling, try to repair the brain. 
But after two months, if you see the bigger, uh, ma more magnified microscopy, then you see this is damaged portion. This is the stem cell, which is brown here at the border. And you don't see any other cells here. So unwanted cells is gone. Now it is trying to repair. But the stem cell which you injected, those are not needed, should not be there also. Otherwise, it may create problem. So after that, if you see, uh, these are the real-time gene expression, all these things, that, that okay, these cells were there, so this life science. But so, so first time to the world, I showed that, yes, you may repair the damaged brain using the stem cell. And that is the turning point for the medical science because before 2005 or 6, medical colleges were teaching if the brain cell or neurons are damaged, you cannot repair it. After 2006, they started teaching, yes, if neuron is damaged, you can repair that. So based on the same thing, I, w I, I became the part of one team at University of California, Irvine, at the, uh, there's a big uh, colleague and scientist called Hans Christed, and uh, we went for the spinal cord injury program to see how it really worked. So this, this, this was uh, uh, from U UCI, uh, Christopher Reeve. You know, the Christopher Reeve was the uh, superman, and he got the spinal cord injury, so he funded this research at this, uh, for the development of spinal cord injury. So we actually, uh, so what happened in that uh, uh, clinical trial, this is, and then this mouse was limping, having a spinal cord injury here. So in normal case, the signal goes like this. And when there's injury, the signal blocks like boom. We are on the wheelchair. We cannot walk. And then we injected a specific kind of cells to repair this. And this, then asked the same three questions, survive, multiply, and try to repair or not. So after it went there, it repaired, and then mouse started walking, tail is up. So this was the first time showing to the world that yes, stem cell may repair spinal cord injury. This went in the clinical trial, uh, FDA clinical trial, to use the human embryonic stem cell to treat the spinal cord injury from the UCI. Uh, in 2000, uh, it started at 2007, but went in the clinical trial 9 and 10 and all. So that was the first time to the world showing that, yes, stem cell may repair the uh, spinal cord injury. Now, this is very good uh, slide, actually. Working at the uh, Salk Research Institute, you, uh, Dr. Jonas Salk was a very good friend of uh, Dr. Uh, Vikram Sarabhai. And Salk is the person who created the Salk vaccine. Because of the Salk, there is no polio in the world today. And his story is also extraordinary, like uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. So uh, working there at the Salk uh, stem cell core facility, uh, I created the real neur neural cells using the stem cells to know if these neurons can really repair the damage uh, neural cell and heart and all other muscle or neuromuscular problems. So these are the, you, you can see these are the neural kind of cells. But to check this is real neural cells, yes, it was given some other chemical, so it turned to blue, red, and all these colors. But it is telling that it is neural cells. But scientists always ask, it is neural cell whether it functions or not. If it is not functioning, then what is the need of this neural cells? So to check the function, what I did, I plated the human, this, this photograph you're seeing, this is the human heart cells in the plate. And then I put the neural cell, which I created in the lab, on top of this heart cell, asking the question if this neural cell connected to the heart cell, and heart muscle character is to contract. So if the neur neural supply is there, impulse are there, should it contract or not. So when I did that, if you see this heart cells start beating in the plate. 
So I, sh I showed the neural cells which were generated in the lab. Basically, it works. So using this idea, several neuromuscular or neural diseases may be uh, treated in future. So say, saying that the, 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 there is another thing. So I, I told first about blood, then the neurons. And now there are a lot of autoimmune diseases where our own immune system start killing our own body parts, like type 1 diabetes is autoimmune, where your own immune system thinks that pancreas is foreign body and start killing like ALS, mul uh, multiple sclerosis, MS, where the new, uh, immune system thinks that, yes, your neurons are the foreign body, it start killing, and there is very slow progression of the disease and very, very bad for the human being. So these are the autoimmune diseases. There are a lot of autoimmune diseases. So I was thinking, that is it, uh, Crohn's is another autoimmune disease where your intestine get attacked by uh, new neurons, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the immune cells. So if you don't treat that, it becomes the colon cancer. So I was thinking, is it possible to really treat the autoimmune diseases using the stem cells? So you see this is, I created a model in the lab. This is the uh, Crohn's intestine, very loose, and this is the tight intestine, that is normal intestine. So I did the same thing. I injected the stem cell. You see very few stem cells after five days. And then after two months, you see a lot of green. These are all the stem cells. And uh, then this is the Crohn's. Uh, this is the normal. This is the Crohn's. And this is after treatment of the stem cells. So you see after treatment of the stem cell, this became almost normal. So uh, again, this is first time in 2007 I showed to the world that you can treat autoimmune disease like Crohn's using the stem cell. Till today, there is not much reports on the Crohn's using the stem cells. So I showed first time to the world that yes, blood can be regenerated, made in the lab, then neurons can be regenerated, then Crohn's or autoimmune diseases can be uh, treated using the stem cells. So there are others uh, which uh, slide related to uh, autoimmune diseases, which I'm not going to bore you guys. But this is very good uh, uh, recent patients I, I would like to s share. Uh, she was having uh, Parkinson's disease and we treated her uh, with the stem cell and we found and amazing results with this lady. Sjogren's, migraines, the list goes on, gastroparesis. It's really kind of fun and entertaining being me because kind of like winning the health lotto. Um, so you see, this is before treatment and I this is an after treatment. I have to get some stem cell uh, treatment that could really help. And, and even I she can really walk like to do that up stairs also. A, sorry, a teenage daughter and she means the world to me. So it was yeah. so amazing to see the results. This is her mother talking, so, so I, and uh, there are a lot of other, uh, uh, basically, uh, patient and clinical studies with this stem cell, uh, in his which upper we treated. And in lower limbs. So we have the excellent results. I'm Brad Wallace. This is my wife, Petra. And she, she's um, uh, suffering Petra with multiple sclerosis. Uh, she's been diagnosed about a year and a half ago. Um, ALS is a degenerative. And so we underwent two stem cell therapy transplants uh, in the last few days. Uh, since the transplant, I've got a bit more renewed energy at this time and a little more movement in my muscles. And so what Geostar and Dr. Nam have offered us is hope that we didn't have before. We we were a little apprehensive at first coming to India from, from Canada. We didn't know what to expect. Patel, a spine surgeon at Geostar India. He's by local uh, director. We are a patient uh, of cervical spine injury at the level of C5-6 vertebra with the complete transection of cord. You can see the complete transection of cord here. 
This is a complete he's, transition. He's showing form. the spinal cord it injured uh, injury five, six, uh, treated by here After in Ahmedabad. After injury, patient became uh, for a patient. He was operated for his spine fixation somewhere. Uh, after 15 days of his uh, spine injury, patient uh, came to us for uh, stem cell therapy. After first stem cell transplant, patient experienced some uh, sensation and movement in his upper limbs, some minor sensation in his uh, lower limbs. Today, we need a second stem cell transplant at the site of trauma. Couple hours right after the second stem cell transplant, again patient uh, experience further improvement in his upper limbs and in lower limbs. So we have the excellent results. So, so you already see this that. Is so, uh, this, is, this is very wonderful actually. There is no treatment of skin psoriasis. There is a disease, a, a kind of autoimmune disease again, where the skin get uh, problem. So what we did in this, even we did not inject stem cell here, we use the stem cells, we have the technology to extract the stem cell secreted molecules. Stem cell secretes a lot of molecules also. So we collected those molecules and we gave those molecules to this patient to apply topically. And so you see this, this is the disease. And after application, you see this is total clear. There is no treatment in the modern medicine for this. And this patient only use the stem cell secreted molecules for two weeks and three times in two weeks, that's all. And he's, he's clean. He was suffering last 15 years. So we, we also do uh, anti-aging and all these things. Uh, and uh, when you do the anti-aging, because, because the stem cell is the reju rejuvenation, okay? The stem cell is the rejuvenative cells. So it can be used for, when we, we have, it's very simple to understand that when we are very young, we don't get problem. If there is any problem, it gets repaired immediately. What is the reason? reason is that we have a lot of stem cells that time. So whenever we get injured, we immediately get repaired. We don't even feel that we got injured and this having some kind of problems. But when we go old, our stem cell goes down. Then if there is some problem, because we do not have enough stem cell, so disease start coming out. So the whole idea to inject the stem cell from outside, so it may rejuvenate your body, and that is called anti-aging treatment. So if we do stem cell with anti-aging, then skin texture improve, energy level, all uh, the function, metabolic, metabolism is better, sugar, blood chemistry improves, improved mental sharpness, experience less tiredness, possible weight adjustment for improved body, improved blood pressure, improved heart function, improved liver, all, all the organs in general the function get improved when we do anti-aging like skin texture and all these things. Uh, I, will, I will certainly um, uh, request uh, Devan Bhai to come at uh, uh, the podium because he's uh, with me, in struggling, uh, he struggled a lot with uh, initial stages to bring this science up to this place. I would uh, request him to share a little bit about uh, his own struggle. So please Devan Bhai. Thank you, everyone. I'm Devin Patel. I'm the president and the CEO of GeoStar. Dr. Anand is the chairman. We're the two co-founders who uh, started the GeoStar 10 years ago, and we're in these struggles for almost 18 years. And um, basically, he came to, I was in the temple. In San Diego, there's an Indian temple. I was a president of the temple, and I would stand at the door, open the door for everybody, and close the door for everybody. And Dr. Srivastava comes, he's a Hanuman Bhakt. So he would sing beautiful devotional song to Hanumanji and play drum. And uh, one day he just came to me and he said, Devin, uh, it feels like uh, I'm getting some kind of messages or energies from the deities that I should talk to you. And I'm doing this science, which I don't even know what it is, how it is, what's going to happen, whether it's going to happen or not. Uh, but um, I thought I would talk to you and share with you, and that's how the journey started. So it was a divine intervention, literally, in the temple. 
and that's how we both started in the field and fortunately today uh, with God's blessing we are sitting on the top of the field and we've been able to uh, do a little bit um, in this field and we wanted to bring this science and make it available to the masses. The vision become very simple. When you're doing something guided with the higher power, um, it automatically becomes uh, very um, massive in its impact, massive in its reach, and you only become the instrument and you don't have to worry about anything and just go with that guidance and that's what we've been doing for so long. Uh, so. When um, Obama came to see Modi ji, um, Dr. Anand uh, 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 proposed one more hospital in Kashi because he's from Kashi, you know. So that's where they were at the, um, they were covered in this Times of India. Uh, Dr. Srivastava presented uh, yeah, Goosey Peace Prize to Health Minister of China in 2015 in in Philippine, uh, Indian uh, not Indian American Congress uh, honors him for his contribution to the field many times, and here's the very interesting slide that I wanted to share, where you see Dr. Shivastava, President Ronald Reagan and First Lady Nancy Reagan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and many many people, uh, and the story behind it. Uh, President Ronald Reagan died because of Alzheimer's and First Lady after he died wanted to find out that, um, that is there a way that stem cell could have helped Reagan in his Alzheimer's or not and she started searching and at that time there's a debate started in the state of California about stem cell in 2003-2004 and Dr. Shivasta was in interviewed as an authority in the field, and few of those early people became a catalyst to make this science see the daylight, and state of California created the largest government department for stem cell research and created a $3 billion research fund for state of California. And because of this whole movement and those few catalysts that this science saw the daylight today. Uh, this is a Salk Institute, uh, very interesting so, uh, story here, a little bit Dr. Srivastava shared. Um, Karthik Bhai, you will um, uh, like this. Um, we're sitting uh, here with the Jonas Salk's son, Dr. Peter Salk. Uh, Jonas Salk, who invented a polio vaccine, and, and that's why the polio vaccine is called Salk, Salk vaccine, um, and that is in San Diego. This is one of the top research institute in the world, and San Diego is a medical research hub of United States. Um, and that time I found out from Peter Salk, his son, that uh, Jonas Salk and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai were friends, and they were coming, he, I think he visited India in Ahmedabad, and of course uh, Vikram Sarabhai came to San Diego to meet with him, and the sudden pity of life today, we are sharing this story from this stage. So that is very um, um, heartwarming. Uh, this is the first hospital we started in, um, uh, in Ahmedabad, that's, um, which was inaugurated by Modi ji in 2011. Uh, and in the Surat, this is the project that we're working with the government of Gujarat to build the uh, world's largest stem cell treatment hospital uh, for sickle cell disease. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet with um, uh, Stephen Hawkins when he came to San Diego, he invited us to find out how stem cell can be uh, helped in his condition. He's suffering from ALS, so we spent a lot of time on one-on-one -on -one to help him understand the science. He was very excited to learn about it, but uh, did not live long enough for this, benefited from this science. Um, this is a New York uh, Times Square at the uh, NASDAQ Tower. We're not publicly traded company, we're a privately owned organization, but we were featured at NASDAQ Tower when one of the uh, CM of uh, Zarkand came to US, wanted to do similar project as Surat in Zarkand. Um, Under Secretary of State of United States, uh, when um, Obama was coming to meet um, to uh, the, during his first term to India, 
we were discussing how stem cell uh, project can be done in India and how we can join them to India, but we could not in the second time we did. Um, as, you all, as you may know, San Diego is a Navy town, it's a military town, and so we are planning to work with the U.S. Navy to do special programs for the soldiers for their injuries. Um, and you know, we meet with many different people, the senators and all that, um, all kind of different dignitaries. Uh, um, we're in Mexico as well. Uh, we're working with the Mexican government, and our we have a private project that is in San, uh, in in Mexico, two locations. Uh, this is uh, the government of Saudi Arabia invited Dr. Anand to uh, share his knowledge with the people of Saudi Arabia and at the King Faisal Hospital. Um, government of uh, Thailand invited, and they are also honored us with the King emblem for the um, uh, for the uh, uh, by the uh, by the the royal court. Um, Shushi Ravi Shankarji met us um, actually in a very early stage of this field. I think, if I remember right, maybe 2008, and he's the one who inspired me to say, "Devin, you have to come to India and help our people." And somehow, that all took place and we end up coming to India and working in India. Uh, Baba Ram Devji, we met that we wanted to work with the stem cell derived molecule based products like Dr. Srivastava shared with that uh, hair tropical uh, products or something like that. We may work uh, and bring it to India. Uh, we signed the MOU uh, in the state of uh, um, Andhra Pradesh uh, to build the stem cell university in the new capital of Amravati. Hopefully that project will uh, start soon. Um, we're working with the, working in China with the government of China and the private sector to, to do build some projects there. Uh, government of Panama, I'm um, not government, the University of Panama, one of the universities were invited us to uh, share our knowledge in Pan Panama. Um, we just came from uh, Bangladesh uh, with the government and a private sector. They wanted to develop a stem cell program there. So we're doing one more project in Bangladesh. Uh, this is a special project, anti-aging project that we, um, that we are proposing in the Bahamas. Um, and you know, many, many um, media and uh, TV shows that we get to speak regarding this science and um, just recently, Dr. Shivastava announced uh, from uh, Good Morning San Diego that we are gearing up to uh, basically create the largest clinical trial in the field of regenerative medicine in the U.S. under U.S. FDA to treat 5 lakh Americans uh, for free. So that was the announcement. And this is a very interesting slide because San Diego is um, uh, a research town and there are several, several Nobel laureates. So. Um, uh, um, uh, one of the Nobel laureates. They have a Nobel genius circle where all the Nobel laureates are there. So they invited Dr. Shivastava to this genius circle uh, to share the um, uh, stem cell science with those people. Um, and he helped uh, and worked at these universities to develop the different research programs. Uh, UC San Diego, Salk Institute, Burnham, UC Irvine, UCLA. And this is the last slide that I wanted to invite him back to uh, give us a final remark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Devan Bhai. And this is, this is very wonderful slide, actually, just I wanted to share personally. Because as I told that when I started working, I was, uh, I was working on gene therapy, and uh, I started a field of stem cell with few people, and President Bush was against the stem cell science in 2004. And uh, so, uh, there was no federal funding. He told no funding will go for the stem cell science. And he also told each and every single instrument which is uh, coming through the federal funding has to have a sticker not for stem cell use. <laughs> so that's what Devan Bhai's contribution is extraordinary there because then we, because I was working at University of California, San Diego and medical school and then then we thought what to do. And I was totally focused how we may help to the people. I never, uh, because of the, my brought up and maybe blessings of my teachers and parents, I always think how we can help to the people. And then, and if the science is correct, I'm not in America for the politics. So I was thinking what to do. 
and then of course we uh, talked to the vice, vice chancellor and all this so he told okay uh, ucsd is on the state government land if you use your own money you can buy the instrument and you can put your instrument or if you get grant and funding somewhere else not federal funding you can do the stem cell science i allow you so we use we, we used our own money and other things and few other friends money to all, do all these things but important thing i was uh, traveling through the this 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 time i just came on 18th of uh, january and i was uh, going to a marriage so i was uh, going through the train after a long time and at the railway station uh, i was just waiting for the train and then i saw this poster at the railway station and that is so perfect i could not avoid myself to take the photograph of this poster and that tells exactly that and i we have struggled a lot you can you can think that you are trying to make or mobilize entire policy of the stem cell for the favor of the people and biggest uh, uh, the the person who may allow it like president is not convinced enough for the stem cell science so how much courage it takes and i'm talking uh, 14 15 year back and i was very young new to america with all the big enthusiasm and do good and big science and this and that that's what i uh, i'm telling that whatever today i am just blessings of my parents and teacher and when i saw this poster i remember those days that many people especially ignorant people wants to punish you for speaking the truth for being correct for being you never apologize for being correct or for being years ahead of your time because i was thinking much ahead in 2003 4 because people are doing gene therapy if you're right and if you know it speak your mind even if you are a minority of one the truth is still truth the, so so that that is the power of truth which i suffered now i will not say i will i suffered but i gone through <laughs> and i found this this time at the railway station <laughs> so i thought i must share this with all the audience here and uh, this is the end of my today's talk and i hope you enjoyed and uh, i can talk after this meeting if anybody has any questions thank you very much again rajiv bhai and dr karya and uh, all the audience thank you uh, dr anand and uh, devan bhai for enlightening enlightening all of us on this uh, very uh, you know new topic today right so big thank you i think we heard you and and lot of things i think it's a paradigm shift right so it was really a wonderful input so without taking much time on behalf of ama we and all the audience big thank you and now request our president to give a memento so thank you so much i think it was really interesting right uh, and and we appreciate uh, dr anand your uh, passion continuous inquiry in this field right and and we are hopeful that this will definitely going to benefit uh, to the masses 
So big thank you to all of you uh, coming to the 40th uh, lecture of uh, Vikram Sarabhai. Thank you so much.